<clears throat> hey um, Instagram's over here. I'm already rusty. It's only been a couple days. Instagram, you're here. We're waiting on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube over here. For those of you that are new to this, because I have been really trying to connect with more women that are leaders in healthcare, because I know that during this time of these ups and downs, in addition to the stuff that you were already experiencing before, we have been going through these unprecedented times. Um, it's just compounding and it's not stopping and I know how it feels to feel like every day is changing and you're just trying to keep your head above water and so um, I just wanted to recalibrate for those of you that are new because um, those of the those of you that have known me for a while know that I had let you in on me trying to um, really include those women in that space into this message because I think that what I do specifically can help them a lot during this time and I want to be able to help them, especially because there are ways where we can be effective at our job as leaders in our professional and personal life without having it create this imbalance and create this stress and ultimately have us disconnected from who we are and experiencing all of the things that come along with health, such as emotional and physical issues. Um, so that's where we are. For those of you that are new to this space, we are doing a book study on the power of now because we did started this series off with a book called Atomic Habits, which would be perfect for you if you feel like you want to recalibrate around who you are, the goals that you want to achieve in life, etc., so that you can finish the year off strong, or maybe you just feel overwhelmed and you just feel scattered and you want something that's going to help you practically center yourself. After we got done with Atomic Habits, we've now moved on to The Power of Now Per Request, which is a book all about spiritual enlightenment. The benefit of this book is because if you are going to be a leader, both professionally and personally, a lot of times what we focus on are the structure, right? Right? the strategy, the goal setting, the time management, the doing, um, scheduling, all of that. And it's important for you to have those things in place because that is going to help guide you to where you want to be. But if you do not approach life from your power place, you're not going to be able to really create the impact and do it in a way that is unique to you where you bring your unique gifts and talents into what it is that you choose to do and also do it in a way that is balanced in a way that means something that impacts and inspires people and in a way where you feel like you're being authentic and true to yourself because you haven't lost the connection to who you are until you can approach life from that power place you may find that everything that you try to do it just doesn't give you the results that you want and so you end up expending a lot of effort and not getting the results that you would expect from the amount of effort that you're expending and so this book is going to get us to connect back to who we truly are so that we can approach life from our power place in order to then create the sort of things that we want to experience both professionally and personally. So we're on the power of now. Hey, Shaka Warrior. And um, this is the version that I have. So we are moving into chapter six. In this particular book, it starts on page 107. However, I'm actually gonna be skipping around a little bit in this chapter, um, but I am starting off with the beginning of the chapter because I think there's some very good information that we can learn how to assimilate in order to learn how to tap into our power, which is basically what this whole book study I think is about because you know, you, you know, like I just said, you have to to approach life from your power place but at the same time I, I think this chapter in general uh, focuses a lot on that so remember for those of you that haven't read the book there are two people in the book there is someone that sometimes will ask Eckhart questions or comments and then Eckhart will respond so it starts off with this person saying you spoke earlier about the importance of having deep roots within or inhabiting the body can you explain what you meant by that and remember, we're talking about how to tap into your power. And this particular section is called being is your deepest self. So Eckhart is saying that the body can become a point of access into the realm of being. And so he's going to go more in depth with that. 
But the person that is talking to Eckhart says, I'm still not quite sure if I fully understand what you mean by being. And for those of you that have been following this discussion, even though we have talked about it from an esoteric standpoint and also a practical standpoint, you still may not understand what it means, what I'm saying, that if you want to truly experience a, a better life, then you're going to have to do it from your place of being as much as possible. And when you're in that place, life is easy and life flows. So what do, what does he mean by being, or what does being mean? Water. What do you mean by that? I don't understand it. This is what a fish would say if it had a human mind, please stop trying to understand being. You have already had significant glimpses of being, but the mind will always try to squeeze it into a little box and then put a label on it and it cannot be done. It cannot become an object of knowledge in being subject and object merge into one. This is important, right? Because as we talked about, I think a few days ago, and as we talked about at the beginning of reading this book, there were some practical things that I share with you on how you can start to tap into this feeling of being so that you know what it feels like in your day to day. And you can tap into it a little bit more, um, in order to have your day go the way that you want it to. But again, if we try to experience it mentally, rather than spend our energy um, expend more energy trying to just be in that space. That is where you are going to get hung up. He says, being can be felt as the ever present. I am that is beyond name and beyond form to feel and thus to know that you are and to abide in that deeply rooted state is enlightenment. So that is where your being is. You are something other than we already talked about your mind. You're, we already talked about you being something other than your feelings. We're going to talk more about you being something more than your body. So if you can observe all of those parts about you, then they are not you. You are something totally different and the, you are not going to understand what that is like until you do these practical exercises in order to feel that being. But remember, he did say that there are glimpses of when you can feel that. So make sure if you're just now joining us that you go back and you watch the replays. Um, you can find a full, all the videos on all of my platforms, but if you want them in a nice little box in a playlist for you, then YouTube is going to be your best bet. All right. So enlightenment is the freedom that you're going to experience in life. And you can hear people talk about free from suffering, enlightenment, um, all of these things, and you don't really know what they mean. Freedom means that you're free from the illusion that you are nothing more than a physical body and your mind. This illusion of the self is the core error free from fear in its countless disguises as the inevitable consequence of that illusion. The fear is that your constant torments or as long as you derive your sense of self only from this ephemeral <laughs> and vulnerable form. So all he's saying is that a lot of the things that we experience, um, that causes the suffering, the fear, the anxiety, the doubt, the lack of confidence, um, for those of you that love this term, I can do a whole story about it, but like the imposter syndrome, like you're not doing enough. You're not going to be enough. You're not going to have what you want. All of that comes from the illusion of the self that we identify with when we think that we are just our physical body and our mind or our emotions, because we are much more powerful than that. And then he also says freedom from sin is what you experience during enlightenment when you truly learn to step into the power of who you are and free from sin. He says is the suffering you unconsciously inflict on yourself and others. As long as this illusion, illusionary sense of self governs what you think, say, and do. So freedom from sin is not actually all of the things that you have been taught, like drinking wine or I don't know, telling a lie. Uh, you know, you can debate subjectively whether those things are good or bad, but 
real freedom from sin is the freedom from you suffering unconsciously because you choose to live life in a state that is not awakened. And when you don't live life in a state of being awakened, you don't show up as your best self. And so not only does your life suffer, not only do the results that you want suffer the way you want to have balance, the way you want to have less stress, the way you want to have that connection to yourself and the way that you want to manifest things in your life. Not only do those things not turn out right but as long as you identify with the illusion of who you are therefore not showing up in your full power it will start to impact other people because you are unconsciously inflicting your subconscious um i'll say sin because he said it on other people because who you are, your self-concept, how you show up, and because 99% of us don't show up in our power, that means that what you think, say, and do is governed by who you think you are rather than who you really are, which impacts your life. Hey, Robert. All right. So that was the first thing that I wanted to share with you. And so we're going to go on to page 110 and he talks about finding your invisible and indestructible reality. So this person is talking to Eckhart and he said, you said that identification with our physical form is part of the illusion. So how can the body, the physical form, bring you to a realization of being? If you've done the exercises that I've talked about before, you already know how your body can help you understand and tap into who, you're true, who you truly are. The body that you can see and touch cannot take you into being but that visible oh the power is the power flickering can y'all see that or am i just crazy in my house anyway the body that you can see and touch cannot take you into being but that visible and tangible body is only an outer shell so your body is a shell a shell and it is limited and it has a distorted perception of a deeper reality right because if you just experience life by what you experience with your senses you're missing out on a lot of information a multi-layer experience as far as your um what it is that you experience in life that is so weird all right so you inhabit the body to feel the body from within to feel the life inside the body and thereby come to know that you are beyond your outer form this is subtle but it's powerful because we can go two ways remember when we did the exercise to tap into our being state and from that being state we were able to be more aware not only of ourselves but also of our surroundings well, you also are inside of a body because this body can be a tool to help you understand that again, if you can observe your body, your thoughts, your emotions, all of the things, it just helps you delineate this physical body as a container to help you see that there is something inside of you that is you that is not the container. Like if you put water inside a cup, the cup is not water. The water is inside the container. So for you, think about it that way. Our body is not us, but whatever is inside of that container, whatever is inside of our body is part of us. Um, if you put, let's say we're gonna put, let's say we're making a cocktail and we put um, vodka and we put cherries and we put all of these things inside the cup, right? To make a drink. None of those things are, are the drink, you know, they're all different segments and parts of the whole, but the, still that cup is what holds that drink together. So I hope that this helps you understand in a different way that if you are identifying with the shell and with the things that you have inside of you, they're not truly you. And that's how you truly get trapped in this illusion. In your natural state of connectedness with being, this deeper reality can be felt every moment as an invisible inner body, that emanating, emanating presence within you. So to inhabit your body is to feel the body from within, to feel the life inside the body and thereby come to know that you are beyond the outer form. Again, important. So it's almost like if you think of yourself, like I said, a water inside of a cup or think of your soul inside the body. 
It's almost like you are playing like a video game, right? You are controlling your arm, you're controlling, you know, reading, you're controlling all the things that you do, but that is not who you are. You are the person that's making these things happen, right? Same with your thoughts. You are not the person that is having the thoughts. You can use your mind as a tool if you were using it appropriately, but you probably never been taught to do that either. So you just have this mental activity going on, but truly your mind is another tool that you can control and use for your objectives and your outcome. Same with your feelings, all of that. So you need to start to think of yourself as that type of a person. And the body just helps you understand that if you truly are in your power, you won't feel like you are your body you won't feel like you are your thoughts or your mind you will feel more like you are somebody controlling a video game controlling yourself in a virtual reality almost like a sims game but you're in the character that is totally different and if that helps you understand what it means to live in your centered space then i hope that that is helpful um because the, the more that you can feel like that in everything that you do, when you go to work, when you're being a mom, when you're being a wife, when you're being a partner, when you are doing things for yourself, the more that you could do it in that feeling that you are not quite your body, you, you're kind of controlling your body through some invisible um, field, like video game type, then you know that you're in it. You're in that space that I'm talking about but guess what that's the only the beginning of the inner journey he says that will take you even more deeply into the realm of stillness and peace yet also of great power and a vibrant life this is where your power comes from i keep saying that over and over again because we have not been taught that we think that we have to try harder we think that we have to learn more things we think that we need to do all of this stuff and so we will externally try to control what we are doing now based on what we are experiencing now without ever doing the one thing that's truly going to help you get the results that you want the fastest and that's living life from that power place you haven't felt it and maybe you felt it a little bit but the more that you can feel it he said at first you may only get fleeting glimpses of it but through them you will begin to realize that you are not just a meaningless fragment in an alien universe briefly suspended between birth and death allowed a few short pleasures followed by pain and then annihilation so this is kind of what we do right we say you know and this is kind of what we're taught we're going to go to school we're going to get a job we're going to have kids we're going to get married we're going to get a good job we're going to take our vacation three times a year and we're going to make 100k whatever that is for you and then you just focus on you focus your whole being on all of those things and then eventually you know you have some ups where you score in life and then you have a few downs but ultimately you die that is what we are all living for that is what we have all been taught and that's not what life is underneath your outer form you are connected with something so vast and so immeasurable and so sacred that it cannot be conceived or spoken of yeah, we're talking about it right now, right? <laughs> and he said, I'm speaking of it not to give you something to believe in, but to show you how you can know it for yourself. You are cut off from being as long as your mind takes up all of your attention. When this happens, and when it happens continuously for most people, because that's just the way that we've been taught to experience life, then you are not in your body. Your mind will absorb all your consciousness, consciousness and transform it into mind stuff. You cannot stop thinking and then compulsive thinking has now become this collective disease. Your whole sense of who you are is then derived from your mental activity and your mental activity is like, I'm, I went to school, so this is who I am. I'm a nurse and I'm married, so I'm a wife. And depending on our paradigms, we could be, I'm a loser, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough. It could be any of those things, but none of those are who you truly are. But because our mind starts to be compulsive in nature, our whole sense of who we are is derived from mental activity and then our identity as it is no longer rooted in who we truly are, 
becomes vulnerable and an ever needy mental construct. And because we let the mind run the show, so we're going back to what we talked about in week one, as we let our mind run the show, what happens is we miss out on what truly matters. Fear starts to be predominant as our underlying emotion. And the true thing that matters is missing from our life, awareness. If you are in the personal mastery membership right after this, I'm going in our Facebook group. I want to talk to you ladies about awareness. But if you do not have awareness of your deeper self, you are living in a reality that is an illusion. To become conscious of being, oh, hey, Ashley, I didn't see you. And sweet Tangela, um, to become conscious of being, you need to reclaim consciousness from your mind. So you need to take over all the things that we keep talking about and you need to be in control of them. Again, if you want to change your life, if you are experiencing a life that is not pleasurable or it's not what you want, I don't care if it's professionally, I don't care if it's personally, if it's not the way that you want your life to be, the first thing you need to do is work on yourself not try to change externally, you need to learn how to come back to self. Not your body, not your mind, not your feelings, your true self. To become conscious of being, you need to reclaim consciousness from the mind, he says. This is one of the most essential tasks on your spiritual journey. And I won't even say spiritual, I'm gonna say spiritual, but also your physical journey. Because again, coincidentally, just like the other book we did, the things that you are being taught are not so that you can practically do more in your outer world. Um, they're to make you a better person. And a byproduct of you doing this work is that you will experience abundance, flow, relationships, money, career, balance, less stress, all of the things that we want to experience in life. So you are manifesting not only a better internal state because you're connected to your being, your outer world is also better. If you are not experiencing the life that you want or you want some better results in a certain area of your life, the first answer is always to come back to being. All right, so he said, it's one of the most essential tasks on your spiritual journey. It will free vast amounts of consciousness that previously have been trapped in useless and compulsive thinking. And a very effective way of doing this is to simply take the focus of your attention away from thinking. Oh, he just said what I said, but he said it different. And he said, direct it back to your body. So take the focus off of thinking. I'm going to say take the focus off of your thinking and take the focus off of your feels and bring your um, attention back to body where being can be felt in the first instance as an invisible energy field that gives life to what you presently perceive as your physical body. This is another way that you can start to... Um, to um, tap into that power. You need to understand that uh, you are an invisible. Oh, and Ashley said, this is so hard. How do you do that? Girl, it's not hard. It is so, it's not hard because you've done it. You do it all the time. You just don't notice it. If you focus your awareness on yourself, uh, let me step back. If you are new to your journey to living a more aware life, you have to understand that in this world of multitasking, I don't care what you believe, you cannot bring your full awareness to two things at the exact same time. You cannot do it. So awareness is about attention. What are you paying attention to? So if we, maybe if we use that word, that's a little bit more practical. What are you paying attention to? So if you are paying attention to everything that's going on outside of you, um, and we do that a lot because that's what we've been taught, right? Our relationships, our career, our money, our finances, all of the things that suck us out, then you're not being aware. You're not being aware of yourself. You've been aware of everything outside of you, right? And if you um, focus your awareness on your thoughts, meaning you are th always thinking about what you need to be doing, what you could be doing, what happened, what could have happened, and what do I need to strategize, blah, 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 blah. If you are, I'm, we call it probably all up in your head, then you are not aware of who you are. You are bringing your awareness only to your thoughts. And remember, your thoughts are not who you are. Your thoughts are just something that you, when you learn to control it, it's a tool. 
So you are bringing your attention to your thoughts. And when your attention is in your thoughts, then you're not in your body. So it's so simple. The way that you do this is you pay attention to yourself. Um, and like I said, Ashley, you may have missed it. So you can go back and listen to the beginning part, but I, I recommended some ways that you could think about it in order for you to understand what it feels like to be in this space that I'm talking about. But I guess the only way for me that I can feel it is that, um, I pretend like my bot, let's say my, I have a soul inside of all of this that you see right here. And this soul is a, a light being inside of this body. So that means that everything that is physical about me, my mind, my heart, my legs, all of that is not me. This is just a suit that I put over, over top of my light being <laughs> so that I can blend in with the world and so that I can experience life in a new way. Kind of like a video game, kind of like virtual reality, right? And so for me to understand my being, what it feels like to me is that when I'm in that space is that I am this person inside of this body, separate from this body that is kind of controlling everything, which means that, okay, I can kind of like when you're driving a car, right? You're not the car, but you can make the car turn and you can make the car do all these little things. And through that you experience driving a car. Same with your body. You are not this. This is a, a part of you, a tool. So think of yourself as a video game inside your body. And when you say, I want my arm to move, you feel the being. That's the, the that's that's the the, <laughs> the person that I'm talking about. Um, you said it makes sense. Our bodies are just shells and our inner soul is just occupying the body for a while. Correct. So if you think about that feeling, if you were inside of your body as the soul, you made your arm move, you took a drink of water, you you paid it, you were aware of your thoughts, so you checked in like a little dashboard and it's like, what is my thoughts? What's going on with my thoughts? Then as this light being the soul, you say, Oh, what's going on with my little emotion center? All of those things. When you approach your life as an outsider of all of this, then that's when you know that you're in your being. So if you feel like your thoughts are running you, then you're not in it. If your attention is in your thoughts, you're not in it. If your emotions draw you in, it's not in it. If you're paying attention to what's outside, it's not in it. But if you pay attention to, I am a soul and I'm controlling my body and I'm also controlling the reactions and the things that happen in my outer world. If you feel more like that, then to me, for my own personal life, that's what it feels like when I'm in my being. That was a good question and it's so hard to describe. But again, Ashley, at the beginning of this, I talked about it. And also in the first week of this book study, he went over practical ways to do this. And I also believe we either talked about it Monday or Thursday. He also gave more practical tips for you to tap into this. And I'm also going to touch a little bit more on this particular topic for you ladies in the personal mastery membership in about three minutes because I want to talk more about this attention. But just think about that. If you can't, if awareness is too far gone for you right now, just always ask, stop and ask yourself, what am I paying attention to? Because if you're not paying attention to yourself as this being that is controlling everything, controlling your body, your mind, your thoughts, your soul, even controlling your reality, if you don't feel like that in your life, then you need to step back and you need to pretend like you like a, a person playing a video game and pulling the strings in all those areas. And that is how you understand how powerful you are. You are the person that's playing the video game. When did we start this book study? I need to catch up, Robert said. Ooh, Robert. Mm. Let me look real quick and then I'm gonna close it out so I can make sure that we go over to the membership in order to um, be on time over there. Okay, let me look for you really quick. When did we start this? This is a phenomenal book, right? Y'all didn't know what y'all was getting into when y'all picked this book. <laughs> People are just kind of play around with spirituality and like, oh my God, it's so cute. Let's get tarot cards. No, it doesn't matter what you do. If you don't feel this kind of stuff, then you're not doing it right. All right. We started it on August 2nd, August 2nd. So Rob Brett, if you feel like you need to go back and catch up, 
The best place for you to do this is to go to my YouTube channel. I'm Yashika's Intuition on YouTube. I have all of these videos in a playlist and I think I have them in order starting with the very first one we did all the way to currently. And every time we get done with one, I immediately upload it. So make sure you, if, if that's where you want to see them all because you want to catch up and you want them all in one space, go to my YouTube channel. All right, ladies. I will talk to you oh, tomorrow is no, not tomorrow. It's Thursday already because I didn't feel good. So I will talk to you guys on Monday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right, ladies, if you're in a membership, go to the Facebook group. All right. Bye.